quickly, I'll just run through the agenda. And um, as it was said, I hope everyone can see my agenda now. Um, and as I said, as it was said, uh, you will hear both uh, me, uh, Christoph, and Oliver uh, throughout this, uh, this webinar. So we want to start a little bit with uh, why do we actually have design controls, uh, then go into how, in our experience, when we meet customers uh, and businesses uh, out there, how do we see this uh, being managed today? And what we see being the main challenges of doing it the way it is being done today. And uh, also, uh, uh, why, why we actually have these challenges. So what are these challenges? Why do we have them? And then are there anything we can do to, uh, uh, to do these things better? To, uh, to prevent us from having these challenges. So, Christoph? Yeah, thank you very much, Thomas, for that nice introduction. Hope everybody can hear me. Yeah, well, there, today's topic is to talk about the design control in the medic device industry, but what does that mean in detail? Design control is related to the product development process of a medical device and is a formal methodology to improve the patient safety. That means every medical device manufacturer needs to integrate structured activities in the design process. And the design control is a clear and strong requirement from the regulatory bodies like the FDA. And without having this implemented, a medical device cannot be sold. But Let's have a look on the details of design control with the next slide. Yeah, here we have a structured view of uh, certain procedures for the design of a medic device. And all of them have the intention to improve the safety and efficiency. For example, the design input includes the intended use of the medic device and the user requirements or look at the design verification. That confirms that the design output meets the design input requirements or the design validation, ensuring that the device is confirmed to the user needs and to the intended use. Or we have a design history file, the famous DHF, a demonstration that the design was developed according to the approved design plan and according to the requirements from the FDA or other regulatory bodies. And all of that procedure have a relationship to each other. And this shows the next slide. This is the same content like the, same, like the slide before, but shown in a V model and in relation to each other. The left side of the V model is related to the design activities and data needed for, for this and the white right side is related for the results of the design. And the design process takes the design input from the left side and generate the design output on the right side. And the conformance of the design output is checked by the verification as well as the device definition on the right side are the validation against the user requirements on the left side. And all this is covered by change management. And this change management gives us the traceability for all the data that we need in that process. Thomas, you can take the next slide. I will. And uh, as, we, as we see here, uh, all of this data, as Christoph said, is of course uh, connected. Uh, and we see both data and processes are in here in the same picture meaning that the data and the processes are actually also connected and need to be connected for change management and traceability reasons. But if we look at what...